This is the 11th of the series of www.surviveymold.com discussions. Richie Shoemaker, MD, will discuss laboratory diagnosis of a chronic inflammatory response syndrome, part two. In part one of the lab diagnosis series, we talked about HLA, MSH, and VIP. What we're trying to do is satisfy this group of uh, abnormalities that CRS always has. There is a role for genetic susceptibility, there's a role of lack of re regulation of inflammatory responses. And if there is lack of regulation of inflammatory processes, we would expect to find abnormal inflammatory markers. SED rates or sedimentation rates and C-reactive proteins are tests most physicians will think of when we talk about inflammation, but those are invariably normal in a CIRS. What's not in, what is not normal are split products of complement activation. Complement is a group of 31 different proteins that swing into play as part of the initial responses in the innate immune system. One of the parent molecules called C4 will be split into two pieces, C4A and C4B. C4B has its own important functions, but C4A is the test we're looking for. We use the reference lab of Dr. Patricia Gicklis, the National Jewish Center in Denver, Colorado, as our reference lab for measuring C4A. Other labs can do this test for you, but unfortunately LabCorp is still using their FUTHAN protocol that we've been able to show does not have any relevance to the earlier C4A assay from National Jewish. So please send the tube to the right place. In this test, we're looking at a fast reacting uh, molecule that appears following exposure to a water damaged building. We know that after one day, C4A will be markedly higher compared to day zero in diagnostic re-exposure trials. But we also know that as short an exposure as 15 minutes will give a rise of C4A measured four hours later. So C4A goes up quickly and can stay up. Levels are normal when they're 2830 or less, but if they're up to about 5,000, we notice that they are abnormal, but not uh, alarming to the point they need to have treatment. Unfortunately, the mean uh, range for abnormal C4As in any CIRS is over 10,000. These abnormalities will contribute to reduced delivery of oxygen and capillary beds that we can document in the brain using magnetic resonance spectroscopy. We certainly can show that high C4A is resulting in ongoing presence of multiple symptoms through the mechanism of capillary hypoperfusion. C4A has got to be reduced for patients to recover their health. The next inflammatory compound of concern is transforming growth factor beta-1. This compound has extraordinary role in multiple innate immune mechanisms, whether it's TH17 and T regulatory cell imbalance, whether it's abnormal activation of uh, gene uh, replication or gene suppression, and both can occur, whether it's loosening of the blood-brain barrier in the brain, TGF-beta-1 is a player. If you have problems with skin thickening or fibrosis, think TGF-beta-1. If you have abnormalities in breathing with interstitial lung disease uh, present or uh, prolonged diffusion capacities for carbon monoxide, be thinking TGF-beta-1. If you have unusual neurologic events, whether it's muscle tremors and fasciculations, whether it's tics, whether it is uh, unusual seizure disorders, or even if it is scarring in the brain, as sometimes seen in MS-like pictures, think TGF-beta-1. Along the same line, matrix metalloproteinase 9 is the product of cleavage of the parent molecule 
MMP9, correction, MMP14, following its activation by cytokines in peripheral blood. MMP9 delivers inflammatory elements out of blood, puts them in tissues, and causes all kinds of havoc. MMP9 has a role in atherosclerosis, it has a role in neurologic disease, lung disease, uh, muscle disease, and systemic uh, inflammatory processes as a general rule. This test is far better to, assor to assess uh, pro-inflammatory cytokine responses than measuring any cytokine in blood where the presence there will be confounded by binding of the cytokine. MMP9 tells us globally of pro-inflammatory cytokine flux. In part three, we'll go on to talk about hormonal abnormalities found in labs.